This is Don't Get Me Started. This is a conversation about advertising. And here is your host, freelance creative director and creative circus department head, Dan Balser. Hi, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Uh, don't remember the last time I was up here at Droga 5, but um, there's no way it was this quiet. This is a Sunday night, <laughs> late spring, and uh, there, I think there's one other person in the building, and we found this <laughs> tiny little hole in the middle of a, of a pitch, and uh, Carly has been uh, gracious enough to take time away from work to talk to you and to enjoy some dinner. And, you know, I say this at the beginning of all these episodes when I meet with alumni, it's just always great to catch up with them and see how life is going. And life is going up in New York. And uh, we are both admittedly exhausted. <laughs> so I came, I came from Atlanta today, uh, very early morning. Uh, Carl, Carl, yesterday was, just to show our hand of when this is being recorded, yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. So Carly's feeling the, <laughs> Come on. the uh, Seis de Mayo right now. Yeah. And, uh, not it's not fun. as fun of a day. No, not as fun today. <laughs> having, to, having to work on a Sunday is never a great thing. But um, all for all for advertising, <laughs> all for the good, all for the greater good. So um, Carly graduated from uh, UNC Chapel Hill <clears throat> in t- go 2014. Go Heels. Um, is that how they pronounce Chap- Chapel Hill? Is that what they say? It's Chapel Hill. Go <laughs> Heels. Go Heels. It's two I syllables. I know what it is. Tar Heels. 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 Um, <laughs> and then graduated from and then graduated from the Creative Circus in 2016. She's been at Droga Five for two years and a month as of this record. And uh, has worked on some good work, um, has worked on um, the first chapter of her career. And I just want to talk about all of that. And thanks for agreeing to do this. Yeah, yeah. It's like I feel like that's always been on the list of goals is to like get on to the podcast. And it's happening a lot sooner than I thought I would, which is a little bit uh, disorienting. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about that for a second, just me and the listener for a second. So I think I'd mentioned this to someone back in Atlanta last week that you and I were going to talk, and they said, well, she's only been out for like two years. I said, yeah, but I think <laughs> it's a very— What could I possibly know? You know a lot because I think it's great to have a perspective of someone who's just starting, and let's make it easy. Let's give you some easy questions to start. So I want to talk a little bit about what what were the adjustments um, coming to your first job from school? Um, I'm also curious about your adjustments from undergrad to the circus, but let's start off with the Creative Circus to Droga 5. What, what surprised you? What were some of the adjustments? What were the things you had to get used to or um, kind of you didn't expect? Uh, man, everything. Everything was an adjustment. Uh, I was honestly shocked at how much I didn't know. You know, you feel very prepared. Um mm. You And, you know, you learn so much at the circus that you feel like you've reached capacity and then you get into your job and you're like, I don't understand any of this. I don't know what these words mean. Um, I distinctly remember one of my first days I was in a kickoff meeting for like a banner brief. Um, but, of course, I was like super eager about it and was like, oh, my God, my first real brief. Uh, and it was banners. And they um, – they were almost, it felt like they were speaking in a different language. Like, I I, te- I was sitting in that meeting. Mean? Do the, I? The technical stuff, you mean? Yeah. They, like, I was like, oh, my God, is this what this is? Like, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? And it didn't help that it was for a client that at the time was sort of hush-hush. And so everything, all the projects were under code names. Hmm. And I was like, what the, like, who even is the like? Who are we working for? for this? Right. I don't. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, so okay. So I'm, I'm curious about this. So like, you felt you, it's not that you weren't prepared to do the work. It's just that right. sort of the job wasn't exactly the same as sort of the school. So like, right. It's almost like I'm trying to think of the analogy. There's some some like I guess college basketball. There's a 35 second clock, right? And then the NBA is 24. So it's like, it's like so the certain things are a little different. Right. Like the cra- yeah. The craft oh, for sure. is the same, but yeah. like it's just sort of this. And I think that can it's happen. the rapper, like the contacts, like. But that stuff can happen even switching jobs. I mean, you can, oh, for sure. You can yeah. go from one job to another. It's like, what are they yeah. talking about? I don't know what I would do if I went to an agency where they make their decks in like Keynote or something. Like, <laughs> which is you my know. whole okay. life would spiral out of control. Um, some place that does in Keynote or doesn't? That does in, or oh. That does. That does. What do you do decks in? We here? use Google Google Slides. Oh, Google Slides. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's so great. It's so easy. 
So you felt uh, like you were thrown into a world that you were just speaking another language. Oh, totally. Yeah. And uh, the I think the other big thing was that in school you are encouraged to sort of like – like at the end of the day, you have you have people who you go to for feedback and advice on stuff. Like when I was in school, it was basically you, Tim Turnquist, Phil Fattore mm-hmm. – that might have been it that, that by how the time cool I graduated. Is, how, how cool is that, that Phil Fattori's on this list? I mean, Phil was yeah. a student. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was like people, everybody from like teachers to people who were like a year or so ahead of me. He, I, may, he may be like a, a soulful generation ahead of some of us. And you know what? I don't, right. I, I don't think it, people are going to call me out for being a Phil Fattori fanboy. On the <laughs> I already have a repeat. Oh, you love Phil. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. 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 It was uh, – so, okay, so hold on. So what kind of advice – okay, so what you're saying is you knew who you could go to, but you yeah. get to the job. I want to let you finish yeah. that thought. Uh, I, in school, I sort of had my core group of people that I went to for feedback. But other than that, my philosophy um, – and I tell students this now. My philosophy was very much portfolio school is about like what do you want to be in your book? What do you want your style to be? How do you want to represent yourself to the industry? And so, you know, it's very self-led and – uh, junior life is not very self-led. <laughs> junior life is is very other people led, and um, that was an adjustment too. It, you know, not not that you're like stifled or anything as a junior, but having so many filters and so many layers of, you know, not even just like your bosses, but even the clients and you know, cr- crazy outside sources that you never would have thought of that are controlling your work. Did it and, frustrate you? Yeah, it's frustrating, but it's also sort of like it makes um, – it gives you more parameters and makes it more of a challenge, which like in a weird way is more fun. And, you know, you're not just like, I think this is funny, so I'm going to write it and just do it however the hell I want. Like it sort of makes you have to consider your own craft a little more than you do in school because that, in school you're just like, I like this, so it's going in my book. That's really interesting. I never thought about it that way that you're sort of trained to have a toolbox – that you have to apply when you get to work in a more <clears throat> professional way, but it's not necessarily like, I built this and it's great. I built right. this and it's great. It's like, it's a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit more like uh, you're a workman that shows up and then the blueprints are laid out in front of you when you get there sort of Right. Thing. Yeah. It's a, it's like you go from I made this and it's good to uh, I made this and I know it's good because like 18 people approved it. Like. <laughs> So, all right, so you said the very very first answer to the question that was <clears throat> that you showed up at a place where you felt like you were kind of swimming in new new water and mm-hmm. to navigate things. What? So I'm, I'm kind of thinking about this whole conversation, this whole episode as a sort of guide for for eighth quarter kids, kids just yeah. starting. So what, is, what am I supposed to do with the information if I know it's going to be a new language? Like what can you do to prepare for that or – should you just prepare by knowing that you that it's going to happen? I think exactly that. You prepare by um, just, like, not getting cocky and not mm. – I mean, I definitely, when I left school, had gotten a little cocky and was like, I'm going to Droga 5, blah, blah, blah. Like, everything's great. I have a job. And then you sort of don't, like – you don't finish that thought of, like, I have a job. Everything's great. And then you get to your job and you're like, oh – Maybe I don't really know how to do my job as well as I right. thought I was going to. Um, and I think if you're just mentally prepared for, like, you, you're prepared to sort of be nimble and to, you know, be flexible and be able to work under any sort of circumstance. Like, if you're just – if you already have that in mind, then I think it makes the transition a lot better. Hmm. How, how did uh, your undergrad experience – prepare you for this and, and what's the difference between um, your experience at, at UNC and your experience at the circus and um, this may be an unrelated question I'll go back to the first one <laughs> if it is and uh, were you have you always been resilient and patient um so I'll start with that part resilient yes patient not so much mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm very much like I I always have to feel like I'm like achieving something, hmm. um, and if I don't feel like I'm achieving something, I get really antsy. Do you set goals for yourself? Yes, um, but it, it I feel like it's a lot harder now. It was so much easier when you're in school and you're like, okay, I want to make this grade in this class, and you know, I want to like graduate with 
this GPA or whatever, and then you get to Circus and you're like, okay, I want to go to this agency by this time. It was Carly Corp then. And it was like you were CEO of Carly Corp. Yes. Now, <laughs> now you're working for someone else. Right. And it's and that's what we do. We work at agencies. Yeah. Like we work for an agency who's an agent for someone else. So yes. It's not yeah. about you anymore. Yeah. And even outside of work, it's hard to like find things, you know, to, to pursue enough that you're setting goals and mm-hmm. keeping yourself active and that sort of thing. Um, but – Going back to the question about the difference between undergrad and portfolio school, um, I compare it a lot to if if you were to be pursuing film. Um, if you go to a, a film school, um, you make a lot of films. If you have a film degree from like an undergrad program, you watch a lot of films. Interesting. Um, and I feel like that's what I got sort of out of UNC was that I knew – I knew the industry. I knew how agencies worked. I had seen a lot of ads. I was really just like immersed in the industry, but hadn't yet made an ad myself. And I looked at other people's work and never made anything myself. And so, and that's a huge difference. And I I was sort of um, naive to how important that is, even though it's, it Mm -hmm. should be pretty obvious. Um, How naive, naive to how important which one is. To how important, like, actually having made right. an ad well, I, is. I, I was just thinking the opposite. I was thinking how um, important it is to, to have seen advertising because I right. think a lot of students that come in now have not really – they never got sort of the history of advertising. They don't even mm-hmm. know what an ad looks like. The stuff that you – God, what was the stuff that was in your book or that you had that was, like, pre-circus was still, like – it was, like, perfectly executed – Advertising, and <laughs> and the thing about it that I don't mean to be like I'm not making a judgment whether it was good or not. It was good, but oh, my, it was terrible. But my point it is, it was so bad. You was, could say it. Well, no, I think it used wit. <laughs> it was pretty intelligent. But my point is it that it, at least you understood sort of what an ad is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And I find now in 2018 that a lot of kids coming into the creative circus. They don't know what a headline is right. or what a print ad is. They hear creative and they're like, this is for me. Yeah, and I think that yeah. they're incredibly smart. And once they once they understand sort of, okay, here's the map and here's where we're mm-hmm. going, they can solve the problems. But they don't – and I think it's really exciting also because they're solving problems in ways that aren't familiar. Totally. Yeah, aren't familiar. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But you had sort of this foundation. I don't see that coming out of many undergrad programs, this foundation of like, okay, I can do this. And right. now what else can I do? They just was like, I don't even know what the, this thing yeah. is. Yeah, which yeah. is really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, I've, I very much value the fact that I was able to go into circus um, knowing I was familiar with agencies, familiar with how they mm-hmm. worked, like what my job would be in an agency. Um, I think that that definitely gave me a little bit of a head start. So wait, you um, were, so you worked in the office of admit, undergrad admissions at UNC? I did. So did, you, did you find that on LinkedIn? I found that on the <laughs> internet. The internet has information. Yes. So you were doing kind of advertising before you did advertising, right? In a way, was there was there marketing involved in that? Yeah, yeah. That one was fun um, because, it, it, like, I had been in agencies before um, for internships, but that particular internship was fun because I got to like apply that in a way that I actually cared about. Like my, my job at the admissions office was to run their social media and like run it in a way that was recruiting students um, Mm -hmm. and, and relating to these 17, 18 year old kids. Um, And that was something I actually really cared about, especially um, I sort of made it my personal mission to be reaching out to kids in more rural areas who may not think that they have a shot at UNC because that was me when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was all the, like, principles of advertising and marketing. And it was actually a fun time to be there, too, because they had just rebranded and, like, taken on this voice and all of their communications that was super casual and fun and, like, laid back, which is how you should be talking if you're talking to 17-year-old mm-hmm. kids. Um, so it was fun to be there and be able to, like, take that on as a writer That's and cool. help them, like – sort of craft that voice. I'm pretty sure that I was older than you are now when I decided, oh, yeah, advertising would be cool. Yeah. So when did you – did you always know this was a career that you wanted to go into? Like when did you discover no. this? Um, I mean I knew growing up I was always like really into writing and reading and just like everything about literature and words. Uh, my mom is a retired English teacher and so mm-hmm. it was like – books and like words and stuff were really important in my house words and stuff 
Um, and so, <laughs> so I was always like when I was little, I would write little quote unquote books and like staple piece of paper together and write a little story with like a written and illustrated really by cool. Carly Brooks on That's it. That's cool. Um, I would think probably a lot of us did that kind of stuff. Yeah. A lot of creatives did that when they were growing yeah. up. But I just I didn't, didn't realize you could make a living of it until I right. was in my 20s. Exactly. As anything other than like a novelist or a journalist or something. Right. And exactly. I, I, um, for some reason, when I got to college, I had it in my head that I wanted to be like a nutritionist or um, I think I went from nutritionist to like somebody who studies diseases. I think it's called epidemiology. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Words and stuff. Words and stuff. And – then I got to college and was like, wait, fuck, I'm terrible at math and I'm terrible at science. Like, what am I doing? I heard this crazy story the other day. So we're talking about my daughter who's very impressive. And I said she could do anything I think that she wants to do in the world except for I don't think she'd be a good doctor. She's <laughs> super squeamish. Yeah. Doesn't want to talk about body parts. Right. And I have a friend who's like a renowned – like an internationally renowned heart surgeon. And he said the, he said the first time he went to an operating room, he fainted. <laughs> he like could not deal with anything yeah. like that. So yeah. I think you can pretty much overcome stuff. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if my like my level of math skills. I, I don't know if I could okay, have overcome. Right. That. Well, thank, th- the world thanks you for doing this. Yes, definitely. So, so can we talk about? Definitely. I'm hoping we can talk about this the stuff that's coming up for the projects you're working on. Can we mention client names for the stuff you're, that's coming up? Oh man, I don't. Can we? I yeah, feel like this cl- is a question for someone <laughs> above my pay grade. Um, I yeah, think we so. can. It's we a, can it's generally a live project. Yeah. yeah so, what do you yeah. work on? What are you excited about? What brands you work on? That you're excited um, about? So, right now, I work. Um, I'm on a pitch, which I definitely no, can't, talk, can't talk, about. talk about. That's absolutely off the table. Um, I hope my bosses are listening to that. Did you hear me not talk about secret stuff? Yeah. Um, I, so, I'm working on. I hope it's not secret any person. Right? No. Talk about oh secret God. Stuff. <laughs> Give it away. <laughs> Turn the mic yeah. off. <laughs> so no existing client work that you were yes uh, yeah so right now I'm working on MailChimp um, which is super fun it, they have such a great voice um, to work with as a writer they are such good clients that like it's so far in my career it's been very rare to have a client be like I I like this but could it be funnier hmm. um, and they're just you know they understand what's good. They're willing and, to take risks, for sure. Yeah, they're willing to take risks, totally. I mean, you can see that in all of their work. Um, and they just, you know, they're concerned about the important stuff, and they're not like, oh, but what if someone interpreted this this way? Oh, and it's just yeah. some outlandish, crazy mm-hmm. thing. Um, so, yeah, they're really um, they're a really exciting client to be working for. Um, and the project I'm on is actually really copy-heavy, which is – that just never awesome. happens. Yeah, and yeah. – uh, so that's been a ton of fun to get to just, like, actually write all the time. It's great. It's um, great. Yeah, it's super fun. So what's your best time of day to write? Oh, God. It's never the same. Like, I, oh, really? I still haven't cracked the, like, if I do this thing, then I will work well mm-hmm. formula. Like, mm-hmm. it's always just a, like, you know, some random burst of energy that right. comes from nowhere. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I don't know if this question is going to make sense to you. I don't know if it's valuable. Okay, great. And oftentimes I'll say that and the listeners never hear it because I took it out. <laughs> but uh, I'm curious about – and this is, again, back to just sort of how how young you are in the industry and how listeners to this may be young as well. Can you describe a day in the life of the junior copywriter at Droga 5 in 2018? Like what does a day look, what does a day look like for you uh, um, typically? How does the workflow happen? How do you get briefs? What does it look like? How does it work? Let's see. Um, man, my typical day. The, honestly, the the shitty answer is that there are no typical days. Um, but I w- will boil it down to uh, it's a lot of just, you know, you work, work, work for a couple hours and then you send it to whoever is supposed to be approving it. You get their approval and you fix things and it's just sort of a cycle right. of – internal. Yeah, of internal uh, churn. So, yeah, how, but, what percentage of a of a day do you think you're actually writing, working, like literally writing and working? Which is an asinine question because as great as <laughs> we're always you, working. Yeah, and you think – I think I thought going into my job that it, that it would be more of it, mm-hmm. like that I would be – actually physically writing most of my day but actually mo- a lot of my day is like in meetings or even just like 
catching up with people. I think it's honestly really important to to be friends with people at the agency. And so, I, like, it's sort of a priority to just, like, hang out with people yeah, what's and your, go what, get coffee yeah. and stuff. What, what are the offices here like? Like, physically? How's it set up? It's um, super open, which is horrible for me because I'm, like, a – like I'm I would like a fucking Jack room. Russell Terrier. Like yeah. I can't pay I would attention to anything. Room. I would live in this yeah. room. This is like we're in this tiny little room. It's if eight people were in here, it'd feel crowded. Yeah. And there's a TV screen, and you can't hear any echo at all. And yeah. Like, I would I would just lock in here. And, yeah. And work. Yeah. I have to do that a lot if I'm doing anything serious. I have to go to like a quieter floor because especially the creative floor is just a mess all the time. Like mm-hmm. there's <laughs> there's always people playing music or shouting or like. Um, we have a, a sort of semi tradition here where if anybody breaks anything, we all erupt into applause, and the whole floor will start clapping. People will be up on their desks like, "Yeah," for just no reason. Awesome. To <laughs> and, stay awake. Yeah, right. Exactly, because we all need a little burst of energy uh, throughout the day. But um, yeah, the floor plan here is is really open, and I sit next to sort of a high traffic like walkway. And I'm constantly like, who's walking by? Who's walking by? Who is that? Well, what are they doing? Room. I want to no, talk to that person. Very, and, Jack, yeah. Ru- very Jack yeah. Russell. Yeah. yeah, I remember I visited some friends at Venables Bell in uh-huh. San Francisco. And I don't remember which one it was. It was <laughs> his, his desk was like on a corner that was like the main thoroughfare where people yeah. were walking to like the kitchen and the bathroom. So like uh-huh. everybody that came by all day long was saying hello. It was brutal. I don't yeah. – I, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. That, that's the only – thing I like about the – and I'm saying massive air quotes, the, my office at the circus, <laughs> which is yeah. literally a fucking closet. You know that the, the air vent – there's no air vent. There's no yeah. overhead light in there. I have a floor lamp oh, yeah. and a desk lamp. Yeah. And I, I don't care because I can close the door and there's yeah. no window. People can't not knock the, on the window and talk to right. me. The door's open. Come on in. I'm not, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I don't hate people. Yeah. Um, what – Most of them. Yeah, I, I do hate some. <laughs> I, I do. Don't get me started. <laughs> don't, um, don't get you started. What um, – so you – this was funny what you were telling me. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. But for, for circumstances beyond your control, you tend to get a lot of people reaching out for advice. Yeah. What, what, what advice do you give, number one, undergrad kids and then number two, kids that are about to graduate from like an ad school? In terms of like reaching no, out to people, yeah. What's what? What are they asking you? And what's your sort of piece? Of, what what piece of advice do you wish you could give? Which I guess is a big question. Well, I mean, let's start off with the questions that you're getting. Yeah, I so I get a lot of kids who, and this was totally me when I graduated from undergrad because I when I graduated, um, I didn't have any job prospects, no internships. Mm-hmm. Um, I even though I was like top of my class, made good grades. Zero prospects. Did and everything so right. I was just like a crazy person reaching out to people every day and just having no, having never met them, having no contacts, like sending cold emails and whatever. Um, and you sort of – you think that like just having a connection, like, oh, they went to UNC, they went to circus, whatever, that that is enough for them – at least I thought for them to like owe me something. Interesting. And um, – even like I would know about the agency and whatever, but I had no rhyme or reason to like why I was reaching out. I just needed a fucking job. And mm-hmm. uh, my so my biggest piece of advice is that that's really obvious when you're doing that, right. that you're just like you're sending the email under the presumption that this person is going to be like, yeah, you're hired. Well, that, and that's just not well, how that two, works. There's, there's two. There's two. Not, I don't, don't want to call them myths, but myths, per, misperceptions about people starting their careers. One is that. All businesses are in the business of jobs. Yeah. Like, this is where I want to work. That's where I want to work. Yeah. That's, so I'll just those, send them an email and then those, I'll work there. None of those places are like job places. Those yeah. are places that are working to serve their their clients advertising. And all day long, they're doing yeah. advertising. And the other thing is this misperception that people give a shit about other people. And yeah. I, and I don't mean to be a dick about this, but like, not everyone wants to be a mentor. Not everyone is selfless with their time. And, yeah. And, 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 I'm not saying that you're a dick or that you're that you're, <laughs> so, that you're selfish with your time, but there's an assumption that people want to yeah. help. And and then what happens when they don't get back? It's perceived in a social social mores where it's like, well, they didn't respond to me, so they don't want to talk to me. It's right. Like, well, why don't you send them another one and get yeah. and offer them something? Yeah, I would I would respond to that though with the fact that like 
one of the reasons I, I try my best to respond to all the students that reach out and like, you know, make sure I'm giving them good advice, things that I probably needed to hear at that level. Um, because it just doesn't take that long. Yeah. And so I, 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 I know I sounded like an asshole. I'm just saying, like, take a look. Just just yeah. realize that when you send something to someone, you're sending it to another human being. Yeah. Who it, has does, a job it takes time. And busy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, but not like like I think that people who are I like, feel terrible because there's some people. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I feel terrible because there's people that I still owe respond emails <laughs> to because they send me links to their websites. Right. And that's a big ask. That takes time. Yeah, for sure. But like even just. You know, if somebody's asking like a simple question, it takes me like thirty seconds to be like, "Yeah, I think you should da 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 da." Um, so I, f- I feel like anybody who is like, "Oh yeah, man, I don't have time to like respond to these students who just genuinely, you know, need my help." Is like, I don't think anybody. Come on, dude. Nobody's doing that. They're just not yeah. going to do it. Yeah. They have. They have. A, yeah. They don't they, even get far enough to like think that. That email is a meet in between the sandwich of two things that they actually have to answer. They right. have to do. Yeah. So For sure. when I say they don't want to, it's because it's just not on the priority. And, yeah. I, I, do, and I don't say that to be, oh, God, I just tell like such a dick. I think it's just to have realistic <laughs> expectations of what you're going to get back no, when you totally. send those emails. Yeah. And I, and I think also, like, there are ways to set yourself up to be more likely to get a response. And, like, w- one of those things is to make it not super obvious that you're just like, hey, I need a job. You work at a place that has jobs. Can mm-hmm. you give me a job? And, like, I – it drives me insane when when kids are like – like they just say that they – you know, they'd like to work – I'd like to work at Droga 5. And I'm – why? I always mm-hmm. respond, what What do you what like about Droga 5? What, what work is your favorite? What – you know, why is this on your list? And I, I mean I've had people literally be like, oh, because – you know, it's it's like a multimedia agency. You guys do a lot of stuff in different mediums. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it is literally everyone right, they else. Need to learn. Well, I think it's just they haven't learned. They, yeah, they haven't, right. They don't, they don't know. I mean, like you even said, the first thing you got here is like, I didn't know what was going on. Right. Oh, so, totally. I mean, you know. But then, it, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. But Yeah. I mean, I think just like not not being like super obvious that, that you're just trying to get a job. Because at the end of the day, we all know that. It's, you know. Um, I think the thing is, it's so easy. Like, I knew that you did this, that you worked in the admissions office. Yeah. It's not hard yeah. to send an email right. to this random person, this rando, and say something yeah. personal to that person. Right. Or on the internet. Right. And start a sort of – I always say that to, to students about to graduate, it's like just one tiny little ask with a little flattery. Yeah. And you start the relationship. You know, you're going to Like be maybe a, a joke here and there. Be a human. That's yeah. important. Don't, don't call me Miss Brooks. Just Ms. like, Brooks. just don't do, I'm 26. Like, <laughs> just, just, you can call me Carly. It's really fine. This is advertising. We wear flannels and jeans to work. Like you don't, mm-hmm. you don't have to call me Miss Brooks. Well, they are, maybe they are from, the, they are from North Carolina. Maybe they are. Maybe they're just, they're just, just that's how they are. We that's want how, to switch that's gears. how they got raised in North Carolina. Got ra- got, <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it technically though reared? Like people aren't raised, crops are raised. Anyway, should, <laughs> words and stuff. Should we, <laughs> should we shift gears? I want to ask you what um, what ins- what pushes you? Is it still fear? Are you still is fear still a motivator for you? What? And, and the reason I said that is because your LinkedIn profile mentions fear twice. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, is it fear of is it fear of uh, the big machine? Is it fear of failure? Or is is fear the wrong word? Uh, I mean, maybe it's not fear. I think a lot of it. Man, what? Inspires me. Motiv- I've never thought about this. Ins- what inspires you or motivates you? Um, definitely, just trying to constantly like be better to um, to not. This is sort of on more of a granular level, but I remember uh, Dave Canning spoke at Circus once when I was there, and he was like, you know, don't stop after you think you've had your best idea. Keep going because like you're probably going to beat it. And uh, that's sort of how I think I'm trying to approach how I work and, and why I'm, like, continue to, to like, keep working hard is that, like, you know, you're always going to be able to beat whatever you think your, like, best thing you've done that's is. That's totally true. You know what I love about Dave's work, about Dave as a person? <clears throat> it's that he pushes um, inside the idea. Like, mm-hmm. This is super granular, but the the little examples in, inside the execution, the way things are actually presented and executed, yeah, um, he just doesn't give up with options. 
Yeah. I, I assume because the stuff is just so friggin' ridiculous. And it's so <laughs> fun. You've seen the new the gummies stuff for day? No, I keep meaning yeah, to watch it, yeah. Listeners, you should check that out. I think it's yes. on my Facebook page. Be better than me. Keep up with the industry. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard when you're working <laughs> on a so Sunday. Hard. Also, I want to say that I'm a little bit pissed off that now you have to pay for ad week because mm-hmm. I'm a junior. Like, for there's credits. a lot of juniors, there's a lot of like students. Who don't have a lot of money and like we're very unlikely to subscribe to things you have to pay for so unless pay, it's Netflix. You know what I do? I pay a hundred nine dollars a year for ad age, and that gives me the creativity online yeah. emails. Yeah. And if anyone that's associated with this is listening to this, I've got a slight frustration, and that is that like I love to to promote those when mm-hmm. they're alumni or mm-hmm. guests for the podcast, and they hide the credits on those things now. Like yeah. you have to email for the credits. Like yeah. What? Yeah. It's just crazy to me that, like, the people who probably need... That's the need... best way to find out who yeah. you should be emailing. Yeah. Like, the people who need it most now are the least likely to read it. Right. Because now you have to pay for it. Oh, you're going to be a good teacher someday. I hope so. Maybe, I want to do that. Maybe now. You'd be very good. Um, what do you think it is about you that's really helping you right now? Do you think it's your persistence? Do you think your just ability to write? Is it your connection with people? What what's your what trait do you think has been valuable for the short term so far? Um, I mean, I think I have, like, as I grew up as an only child, and that, like, manifests differently for everybody. And for me, it, it made me become that kind of person that everybody has to like me at all times. Um, and so, uh, it's, but that has in team settings, it's made me feel really compelled to like, I mean, like I said earlier, just be friends with people and like hang out with people and, and feel like you're close to your team, feel like you have a sense of camaraderie. And I think that that goes really far, especially as a junior, because, you know, then you're top of mind when people, um, when people like need somebody, um, when they need someone to fill in when they're trying to brief a team, when they're starting to put together um, a project, they're going to think of you because you're their right. friend and that's you right. hang out with them. And um, so I think that that's definitely helped me a lot. So shout yeah. out to mom and dad for not having any more kids. <laughs> do, you remember Miranda, do you remember Miranda Gerlock? Did you know her? I don't think so, so she's a student at the circus and she was an only child. And she said to me, don't do it to her got to have a you got to get another have another yeah. child right Miranda we're trying like why do you got to do this thing yeah yeah she was an I don't only need child any more pressure didn't, about this. She, she didn't like she didn't like it being an only child but thanks yeah. so much for talking yeah is there, it was awesome are you okay giving away a uh, contact oh yeah totally go for it yeah um so my email is brooks carly without anything in between um which is fun cuz people call me brooke all the time when they don't know my name uh, Brooke Scarly. Brooke Scarly. They genuinely <laughs> think that my name is Brooke Scarly. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke Scarly. Okay. So everyone, if you're listening to this and you email me, a hundred percent say, "Dear Miss Brooke Scarly." <laughs> is that a, is that a Google Mail? Uh, yeah, at gmail.com. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Um, yeah, LinkedIn, whatever. That Instagram. Stuff. That's yep. weird. My email, Instagram. That would be. What's weird. your Instagram? It's also Brooke Scarley. Yeah, hey, Brooke Scarley. Brooke, <laughs> Brooke, Brooke is an active social media <laughs> user. Uh, you can always reach me at Dan's Podcast at Mac.com. My Instagram is Dan Balser, one word. Um, I'm also on Twitter, Dan Balser. And, uh, Dan Balser. Dan Balser. <laughs> Dan Balser. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. Listeners, yeah, thank you for fun. listening through this conversation and I uh, hope it was worth your time. This was fun. See you again in two weeks. Thanks again, Carly. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. See you. Bye.